Welcome back to 6th grade ELA. I am Miss Kelly. I'll be your instructor today and we are still talking about hatchet. Today we're working on lesson four. All right, so lesson four is going to talk about how does an author develop a character. We know that the main character in this story is a young boy named Brian, but how does the author actually develop this character? All right, so here are our lesson objectives. Repeat after me. I will. Very good. I will continue to gather evidence about Brian using annotations on sticky notes and begin to consider how Gary Paulson is developing the character of Brian through discussion with partners and as a whole class. So this particular lesson is going to allow you to have some conversations with other students or other people around you. We want to make sure that we stay on task and use conversation stems to help guide that process. All right, so Brian, 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 you have spent time using annotations to gather evidence about Brian. You have used this evidence to discuss and write about your opinion of Brian. What is your opinion of him? I know I said I thought he was heroic, thought he was, you know, a little challenged in terms of his thoughts going back and forth, but He's definitely heroic. What are your thoughts of him? What do you think he is? Well, what do you think is a good way to describe him? Very good, very good. All right, so today we will continue gathering evidence about Brian. As you read chapters three and four, we read a little bit of chapter three on the last lesson. We're gonna read some of chapter four today. And it says that you guys are to do that independently. So actually you guys should be reading this on your own so i need you guys to do that thumbs up yes you can do it all right discuss how this evidence helps you to understand how brian responds to the events in the text you know we came up with five events a couple of lessons back five major events we know the pilot having a heart attack is one brian brian even being on the plane going to see his father's another his mother giving him that hatchet and that whole conversation that he has with her the thoughts that are in his mind about the divorce and the secret that he keeps thinking about, all of those are really, really important events. And then him trying to fly this plane on his own, those were major events. And so now the plane crash and his survival, oh my goodness, he survives this plane crash. I'm so happy. But again, survives to do what? You have to keep reading to figure that out. All right, so you're going to need a copy of Hatchet. You're going to need some sticky notes and again the sticky notes are for your annotations throughout my book i have annotations sticky notes in there for me to keep up with different things that i've learned or that i want to reference so that when we're doing our culminating writing task or even as we're doing our our handout here you want to be able to reference it and put it there so that it'll be easy for you to get all right and then um that's it so that journal handout and your sticky notes and this book all you need all right, so read chapter three and chapter four independently, stopping at the paragraph that begins with the secret. As you read, make annotations on your sticky notes. Look for details that help you answer the question, how does Brian respond or change as the plot events unfold? So, hmm, the secret. We've already read some of chapter three. So we're going to go ahead and jump into it a little bit. Let's see. Let's look. Before we do that, let's go ahead and read this. It says, how does this part of the text help the reader to understand Brian? Let's read it. It says, someone screamed tight animal screams of fear and pain, and he did not know that it was his sound, that he roared against the water that took him and the plane still deeper down into the water. He raked at the seat, belt catch. Tore his nails loose on one hand. He ripped at it until it released. Somehow he pulled himself out of the shattered front window and clawed up into the blue. What does this help you understand about Bob? He has a will and a strong desire to survive. It would have been so easy for him to just be, you know, enraptured in fear and just succumb to his situation, but he didn't. He had to fight and claw. And then notice it says that someone screamed tight animal screams. He's screaming 
so much so he's so out of his mind that he doesn't even know it's him that's screaming. So he's in such, such tremendous uh, despair, but yet he still, through it all, he survives. He still overcomes the situation and he survives. So again, I keep saying that he's heroic. He is brave. He is a, a kid that actually has matured even just going through this process. And so this, this character is really an interesting character. All right, let's move on. It says, how does this part of the text help the reader to understand Brian? The memory was like a knife cutting into him, slicing deep into him with hate. The secret. He had been riding his 10-speed with a friend named Terry. She was sitting in a station wagon, a strange wagon. He saw her, and she did not see him. Brian was going to wave or call out, but something stopped him. There was a man in the car. Ooh, could this be the secret? That's in chapter four. We haven't actually gotten into that part yet. I was going to read it, but now at least we know mm, the secret involves his mom. It could be another gentleman that was in the car with his mother. All right. So how does this help us understand him? That he has a good memory, definitely. He does a lot of thinking, a lot of internal thinking and processing, and he has a good memory. And we know that he didn't tell anybody about this secret. He's keeping it all inside. All right, so before we do this, let me read a little bit of chapter four. So I'm going to go back over some of this secret portion. It says, the memory was like a knife cutting into him, slicing deep into him with hate. The secret. He had been riding his 10 speed with a friend named Terry. They had been taking a run on a bike trail and decided to come back a different way, a way that took them past the Aramble Mall. Brian remembered everything in incredible detail, remembered the time on the bank clock in the mall, flashing 331, then the temperature, 82, and the date. All the numbers were a part of the memory. All of his life was part of the memory. Terry had just turned to smile at him about something, and Brian looked over Terry's head and saw her, his mother. She was sitting in a station wagon, a strange wagon. He saw her, and she did not see him. Brian was going to wave or call out, but something stopped him. There was a man in the car. So again, we just read that. And so if you, or uh, let's go back to this particular character, he sees his mom. The first thing a normal person would do is they see their mom, they're going to go right over and say, hey, mom, what you doing? Hey, hey, hey. But he doesn't do that. He pauses because his mom is in a strange car and there's a strange man in the car. What do you think he's thinking? Whatever it is, it's preventing him from going to talk to his mom. He's thinking some really bad things because it's almost like, why, why is my mother with this person? Okay, let's keep reading. Short blonde hair the man had wearing some kind of white pullover tennis shirt. Brian saw this and more, saw the secret, and saw more later. But the memory came in, pieces came in, scenes like this. Terry smiling, Brian looking over his head to see the station wagon, and his mother sitting with the man. The time and temperature clock, the front wheel of his bike, the short blonde hair of the man, the white shirt of the man, the hot hate slices of the memory were exact. The secret. So here it is. This is the secret. His mom is having an affair with some man that has short blonde hair. And that's why his family or his mom and his dad are getting a divorce. And so now you can see why he's angry at her. He blames her for destroying his family. Now it all makes sense. All right, so again, remember, he just survived the plane crash, and he's still thinking about the secret. So again, it lets you know how important or how bad this is for him. But let's go back to the current situation. Brian opened his eyes and screamed. For seconds, he did not know where he was. Only that the crash was still happening, and he was going to die. And he was screamed until his breath was gone. Then silence filled with sobs as he pulled in air, half crying. How could it be so quiet? 
Moments ago, there was nothing but noise, crashing and tearing and screaming. Now, quiet. So again, he's in this place, he has no idea. And it's just so, so quiet. I'm going to move on to page 31. Pain, memory. He turned again and the sun came across the water. Late sun cut into his eyes and made him turn away. It was over then. The crash, he was alive. So he's coming to the realization that, okay, it's not a dream. I survived this crash. I am alive, which is good. But again, like I told you, he's, he lived through it. But now what? I'm on page 33. I'm alive, he thought. I'm alive. It could have been different. There could have been death. I could have been done. Like the pilot, he thought suddenly. The pilot in the plane, down into the water, down into the blue water, strapped to his seat. He sat up, or tried to. The first time he fell back. But on the second attempt, running with effort, he managed to come to a sitting position and scrunch sideways until his back was against a small tree where he sat facing the lake, watching the sky get lighter and lighter with the coming dawn. So again, he's taking in all of his surroundings and realizing that he is actually in the middle of nowhere. All right, so let's do one more thing. Say, or read one more section. It was not possibly believable. Not this. He had come through the crash, but the insects were not possible. He coughed them up, spat them out, sneezed them out, closed his eyes and kept brushing his face slapping and crushing him by the dozens by the hundreds but as soon as he cleared a place as soon as he killed them more came thick whining buzzing masses of them mosquitoes and some small black flies he had never seen before all biting chewing taking from him Ugh, how awful you guys ever been annoyed by flies and mosquitoes all around so imagine this kid with all these injuries and this pain and having to deal with that too. Really, really awful. But okay, let's move on. It says, let's have a whole class discussion. Choose one piece of text evidence from your annotations that is different than the evidence we discussed. So again, I read different excerpts from the book. You have read all of chapter three and all of chapter four, right? Yes. So now you pick something that I didn't read out loud and pick a different piece of evidence. It says take one minute to jot notes about the following in your reading journal handout. This is your reading journal handout. We're on the section that says chapter three and four. All right, it says, what does this evidence tell you about Brian? How does it help you to understand Brian? So you guys remember we've been talking about his actions, his thoughts, and his words, the things that he's saying, the things that he's thinking, and the things that he's doing. How does that help you determine who he is? Think about the author. He's very intentional in terms of what he allows us to know about this particular character. You not only get to read what he's doing, but we actually get to hear what's going on in the character's mind. The author did that on purpose. He wants you to know that he developed this character he wants you to get into the mindset of this character so you can understand what he's doing and why he's doing it. So take a moment and answer the first section of chapter three and four. It says you are to write a paragraph explaining what this evidence tells you about Brian and how it helps you to understand Brian. As you write your paragraph, you want some really, really impressive sentences, some complex sentences. I always tell you, use a positive, use subordinated conjunctions, really use everything that you've learned to make this a really nice paragraph. I would love to see five to seven sentences. You can do a little bit longer, that's great. Take a moment and do that now. All right, so we are now at the end of this lesson. I do have a question for you that you should know if you were listening, you should know. So with lesson four, what is the secret? What is the hideous, terrible secret that has tormented this character I mean, that has driven him to not even want to talk to his mother and makes him feel like his whole life is going to run upside down. What is the secret? Yes, 
he saw his mother in a foreign vehicle with a man that he didn't know. So he's assuming that his mother's having an affair and this is why his parents are divorcing and that's why his life is being turned upside down. That is the secret. All right. So I'm so glad that you were with me today. I hope you learned something. Stay tuned for another lesson. We're going to be working on lesson five. And we're going to continue reading this excellent book, Hatchet by Gary Paulson. Thank you and have a great day.